Welcome to Bang Radio. Steve Maier here, and this is part three of the final part of John Lichtenberg's interview with me. He's from Dominance 101. Check him out there if you're not convinced to go there and get involved in, in man, his webinars, his, his seminars. Uh, just get involved in his overall message because it's really, really a great thing. Uh, man, I don't know what else there is to convince you. You know, this is one of those podcasts that, that, it's awesome. You know, it's our second podcast with him. You know, the first one, go back and watch that one. The guy is an amazing person. There's very few people who can have this discussion. And man, believe me, when he talks, I listen. Man, and when it comes to the realms of sex, look, I'm a fan of sex, but there's not too many people where I'm like, holy shit, you are blowing my mind with some stuff. In any case, of course, support John, Dominance 101. Uh, you know, get involved in his stuff and support us. Man, iTunes, Stitcher, pod bay any of those things that you're listening to this on if you're watching it on youtube there's a whole different world that bang radio produces on on the audio side we put out seven to ten episodes a week on itunes or stitcher man subscribe to us there leave a review man get involved in the dialogue we do we do mad traffic on that and i'm just so happy it's been around three months now and it's just so successful and of course our sponsor venusian arts Go to VenusianArts.com slash evolve if you want to find out about the program that I run that is about the evolved Venusian artist, the total man, the absolute empowerment of self. It's not about pickup. It's not about, it's not limited to, you know, this one expression. It's it's the absolute expression of you. And of course, get involved on the Venusian Arts forum. I answer all my emails, Steve at thesexuallife.com or you can do Steve at, the, at VenusianArts.com. Let's get into this interview. Man, I love the dialogue, so let's keep having it. Remember, right, when you were in high school and you're fucking the girlfriend, you know, at her house and, like, mom's <laughs> in the other room and you're like, and your mom goes in right now and she's like, fuck, yes, fuck me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Shh. <laughs> it was hot, right? It was sexy. It was turned on. Yeah. Like, that, that is what you want to do. That's the kind of fucking edge play you want to create. It's the reason why, why playing in public is fun, you know? Yeah, you uh, know, and even other stuff, in... in I actually like a lot of what you talk about because even, you know, talking about grounding down and having being responsible for that experience, because if you edge play, if you if you access that moment and it gets to some like touchy stuff, you know, like, you know, what if your mom walked in or fucking what if your your fucking boyfriend smells my cum on you or some shit, you know, that's like, uh, you know, that's that's part of it. But if it gets into stuff that's taboo, really, really taboo. You know, yeah. like the rape fantasies, the like, you know, it's like, keep my fucking dick out of your mouth, you know, and they're, they're there, they're loving it. But, you know, it's like they're trying to do it. And then they get into this role of, 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 of the stuff happening and they can't phase out of it, decompress or whatever you want to call back in the real world. And they don't, they, they, that trust isn't there. I think that's where bad sex happens. Oh, you know, totally. Bad sex happens two days later when, when you she's know, there's the disconnect. because she just fucked the strange guy in yep. the bar in the in the fucking broom closet, and she doesn't even know his fucking name, <laughs> right? It's like, what, is it, what does it mean about me? I'm a bad person. I'm like, no, you were turned on, and he was hot, and you were hot, and you guys fucked, and you had a great time, and it actually was okay. But then she's with her lover, telling him his story about fucking the guy in the broom closet. Right. Where's all the fear? Is it yeah. that he's going to make her feel wrong? Is it that he's going to shame her? Or is it can fear from, like, what are my friends going to think? Someone has to make her feel safe. Yeah. Someone has to make her feel that it's okay that she made that choice. Someone has to give her the opportunity to correct that. Give her the opportunity to feel safe. Give her the opportunity to unwind in a way that she recognizes she's not a bad person, but she was just a human who has turned on and enjoyed the experience. And... The thing with bad sex is like, you know, a guy will push it too far too fast, not recognize he blew past the line, keep going, get himself off, and then we'll go, oh shit, what happened? You all right? You know, yeah, it's like, yes. Dude, yeah. where's your fucking re- accountability? Where's right. your responsibility? You, you, you know, she's not just a masturbatory fucking hole. Yeah. You know, this is a human being. And the thing that, the big disconnect I keep seeing and it's driving me nuts is that there have been there's been so much of this culture of treating the woman without respect and there's a reason that I love the new feminism of today because it is about working with men as opposed to making men wrong and I really want to get these men to get on board 
with treating her like a human being, treating her like a, uh, an express person who has sexual desires, and, you know, you're a fucking whore, dude. You're a slut. Do you feel bad about it? No, because in life, for men, it's okay for us to do it. For them, not necessarily so. So make it okay for her to be okay with that. Make it be okay for her to be a slut. I love that there's all these slut walks because they're taking back the word slut to mean a powerful, beautiful woman who is sexually turned on. You kidding me? Of course that's what it means. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. The whole essence of femininity, you know, of the goddess, the diva, the, uh, you, you know, the uh, God, man, just the, the beautiful woman. It, it, it so has to do with sex and beauty. Planet. Let's just pause for a second. They create life on this planet. Yes. You know, we, we don't do that. They do. They, they, have, they, are, they are gods amongst men. Yeah. Okay? Goddesses. They do an empowered woman. This is the thing that's, that, that, that makes me crazy with, with the guys. An empowered woman will empower you. Yes. I mean... Empowered yeah. woman who you respect her power and appreciate her power and appreciate her sexuality... And a woman that you cultivate her being all those things, because you're doing that for her, out of natural desire, she wants to do that for yes. you. Yes. Out of natural desire, yes. she will cultivate and support you to be the most powerful motherfucker that you can be. Yes. And it's, it's, you know, where I drop the ball in my relationship with not supporting that is where it drops the ball and doesn't come back to me. And when I'm on top of it, it comes back to me in a big way. I feel supported. I feel loved. And I feel um, that I can do anything when I'm doing that for her. When I'm not, my life is shit. <laughs> I think what men don't realize is that you want to talk about true male empowerment. You need, you need women in your life. You need yeah. that. You you it, you are so unaware of it. And even if you get back to the, uh, you know, and I'll say this: like, you know, to be a woman. You know, one of my friends brought this up, and she's like, "To be a woman doesn't mean I have to have kids and all this sort of stuff." And uh, to be a man, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to have a woman and you don't have to have kids or whatever, but it is so defining when those things happen. It is so undeniably woman. And we went to a natural childbirth birthing center. And so 10 weeks ago, 11 weeks ago, I saw my son, like, this was fucking crazy, man. Torture. Like you could not explain the insane frustration that was going on with that labor that, that was just, and I've seen C-sections before. Yeah, which are crazy and awesome and totally nuts, but to see the natural childbirth and like, you know, that the head starting to crown and then it goes back in and the pushing and, and for hours over and over, you know, every 30 seconds, every minute that happening. And then finally it breaking, you're like, fuck, dude, I can't, I, I can't even fathom that. And when you think about the toughness of women and the toughness of how they, they take a man and what they have to carry, whether that's emotionally or just straight up sexually, I mean, you fucking... You can deliver to that. It's such a a powerful thing. Women take and absorb men, and and you know it's crazy because my girlfriend she's she's bigger than me. She's taller than me. She's six feet. I'm five eight. But so often women are smaller, but they fucking take. I mean, Jesus. Yeah. You know, if yeah. I had somebody pushing on me like God, you know, <laughs> you know, but they right. take it, and it's part of the pleasure, and it's part of the the awesomeness. And I think that, uh, you know, I, when I when I read the online feminism Jezebel shit or even people that I know talking about feminism and they're like regurgitating somebody else's, you know, thoughts on stuff, it's like this blame, anger, frustration, you know, total detachment of self thing. But when I talk to women that I'm friends with, you know, that believe in the empowerment and expression of themselves and what a woman is in yeah. the pursuit of what that is. You know, who that is, yeah. you know, and, and who she is in her allure, her uh, strength, you know, her nurturing, her, her giving of life. When she explores that, and you can do it in all sorts of ways, you know, uh, that's where I see the real woman that can, uh, can change lives and give life. And the sad thing is, is a lot of these people that are caught up into, like you could say, pick up the same thing. These guys are caught up in like, what a man is, this is what it is, this is what I'm going to be without women. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. what I'm going to be, I'm going to be this definition, and yet right. you can't look somebody in the eye. You know everything about being alpha and can express it, but you can't even make a decision that is yours. You can't even make that choice. 
you know, yeah. fuck, man. You know, like when you're talking about sex and responsibility, what if everybody got to be responsible for themselves? What if we learn that tool? What if we learn the true tool of choice, which is dependent upon integrity, the integration of you, you yeah. know, which is dependent upon knowing you. <laughs> With the dominance thing, it's like, you know, for me, dominance isn't about throwing my weight around. Dominance for me is conveying my desires and wants to others and they, they going, yes, we're in alignment. Let's do this thing together. And dominance for me is... Uh, you know, creating a culture of caretaking and caregiving. It is a culture of um, holding people as whole and recognizing where they're at and having the opportunity to lead that uh, to their desires and their wants or my desires and my wants in a way that everyone wins. Like, the dominance really is about winning. It's not about bullying. It's not about um, you know, we go by the classic dominance, it's power and authority over one over another. But power and authority over another doesn't really define what I do, and it doesn't define the culture that I've come from. Because in the dominance culture, you, you have Mr. Domity Dom Dom's going to throw his fucking way around. I'm an all other, and let me tell you what to do, blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, no one respects you, and no one cares about you, and no one wants to play with you, except for the newbies who think they know what dominance is, and they, they think, oh, that's... I read Fifty Shades of Grey. I want that, and it's like then they <laughs> you, you, you humiliated and like you know uh, turned into an object. That's not fun. That's not you know that's not life. That's bullshit story. Dominance is connection. Dominance is culture. Dominance is creating the opportunity. Period. Creating the opportunity. I create opportunities. I create new experiences. I'm mm-hmm. constantly looking for the new experience, the new thing to create. And when I'm coasting, I'm doing it out of choice, not out of laziness, not out of life is happening at me. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, no, I'm happening at life. And yeah. you know, I'm making small course corrections because my life is going the way I want it because I put all this effort into creating a culture of having what I want. And when I'm happy, everyone else is happy because I love caretaking. And I love finding out what your wants and desires are so I can either make sure you get them or you get enough of them that you, A, appreciate me because that's, it is about my ego. And also that you feel loved and I feel loved and mm. my love language is dominance and, and caretaking. Yeah. You know? Um, the, the culture, you know, we are talking about earlier about... Um, uh, empowered women and, and uh, the, the feminist culture, um, where I think it's moving in the right direction is that we're, there's, I mean, there's still feminist culture that is anti-man. And there's still these misogynist cultures that are anti-women. And they make me crazy. <clears throat> but the cultures that we are developing now, that I see coming around gradually, and you know, it's, it's starting to flow, is where the the feminine energy is acknowledged, the masculine energy energy is acknowledged, and it's appreciated and it's respected as a whole, not as in masculine energy is bad and wrong, and feminine energy is bad and wrong, it's, or it's this dichotomy or that dichotomy. It's actually, no, we are, we are both light and dark. We are both masculine and feminine. We are both capable of being core to our true values, and we can treat each other with respect as humans, and be humans together, humans being, um, in a way that is creating a, a mutual, uh, what's the word I want to put? Mutual respect club, you know, a mutual appreciation. And through us appreciating each other and having respect for each other, we can go forward and cultivate together, as opposed to one being in charge and the other one being in charge or being a part. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Those dichotomies of either or, right or wrong, they don't they don't work for me. They, it's it's it's. It's too black and white, and there's not enough nuance. And personally, we are a world of colors, a world of variety. You know, uh, respect them, appreciate them, cultivate them, and have fun with them. Play with them. What about play, damn it? Go enjoy yourself, bitches. <laughs> John, seriously, you're you are the 
we should talk more, man. You know, and and one of the things that John and I had talked about was just like, you know, getting a men's circle together that they could just talk about this stuff because you're right. There aren't any role models. It it sucks. And, you know, and to be honest, I, you know, I'm not trying to say that I am like a leader or the person I want a dialogue. I want an exchange, just like what you're saying. You know, there's a point and to me, you know, how I discovered this, how I discovered love and what that is, is through sex. But, you know, there were times you were talking earlier about, uh, I forget how you voiced it, but even like this ownership that you feel during sex and that you, you know, that pussy is mine. This, this look is mine. This experience is mine. But what's so interesting is what I learned from all of that is that I own nothing. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's mine. And, and, I claim it only in that she allows me to claim her. Yes. And she's not mine. But it feels I've created safety for her, and she's chosen me to be here. So it feels claimed, but because we are an open relationship, it's claimed to the extent that we are choosing each other, and we are abundant, and we can have everything. But if you're starving, you can't have that abundance. And I think people put these walls up of other people's rules about sex, and that's where the jealousy comes into play. I can feel that. I feel yeah. jealousy, but I know whenever I'm in an orgy, whenever I'm, you know, when, when I'm getting taken care of and experiencing her, and even if somebody else is experiencing her, there isn't jealousy. Yeah. And so what that taught me, what that taught me that those, those uh, uh, kind of misinterpretations about sex and ownership and the young kid and the hormones going and I only got a bank tens and, you know, when, you know, and I own her and she's mine and she's my girl. If I can get to that point, if I can learn how to be a man, if I if I can have that kind of sex, that kind of life, those kinds of decisions, choices, and responsibilities that teach me how to be a man, I then can learn a way of life that has 100% responsibility, which is tough. You yeah. know, that carries into you lose all your money. You get uh, you know, some really good thing happens to you or really bad things happen to you, and you can still be you. Yeah. You don't have to react to that situation. Uh, and to me, and like it sounds like for yourself, you know, sex is the greatest teacher, you know, of that. For me. Yeah. Other people might be something else, but. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is sex. It's, it's, it is. And sex is, I mean, I have been such a sexual creature from a very young age. I mean, I, you know, in kindergarten had a girlfriend who we made out every opportunity we could because kissing was everything. And. You know, exploring yeah. each other's bodies and kindergarten on the bus underneath the church coat between the seats, you know. <laughs> and it's like, you know, sexuality, my sexuality has framed who I am in a way that I am expressed. I'm, um, I'm, I have freedom, I have choice, I have the ability to do. And I've learned so much from all my sexual experiences. It's made me the man I am today. And to get back to that thing you're talking about with the men's circle, um, I truly believe that the problem, one of the bigger problems with our culture is that there really is no more rite of passage. You know, there is no rite of passage for young men. We don't, we don't have that in our culture anymore. We don't have the, you have the experience, a few years experience of learning all these things and then there's a rite of passage and then you're a man. This rite of passage is a big, tumultuous experience and then when you come through it, you feel transformed. But just because you're transformed, doesn't mean you're different. Now it means you're more accountable. You're more responsible. And you're now part of... You're, you're now responsible for all of us. You're now responsible mm. for helping the success, us succeed. Like, that tribal thing being gone sucks. And it's why I've constantly found groups of men to, uh, to have as peers and to teach me things. I always had older friends and always had older guys to... You know, hey, dude, you're fucking up. You know, try this differently. Um, right. And over time, learning that it's not about telling people how to do things better. It's about asking them the questions that get them out of their own way. Asking them the questions that allow them to see the solutions. Asking them questions to have them come to their own answers because it's their value system, not my value system. And what works for them may not work for me. And even though I may see a totally different solution, they're not ready for it. What they're ready for is this. And okay, cool, that's what you're ready for. What kind of support do you need? You know? What kind of accountability do you want? Are you gonna take action? Are you wasting my fucking time? You know, we don't treat men 
that I treat men with respect. I, I'm consistent as I, as I can be with all men. Um, but there's so many young men out there that I see that are just, you know, because they're in their 20s, they're men, but actually the maturity is in boys, and it makes me insane that they don't treat, they don't try and treat each other with respect. They don't try and treat each other, or women with respect. They're just trying to, you know, one up. And it makes me mad. It's fucking it's crazy. I don't, I don't know how to, how to help them fast enough. <laughs> you know, it's weird because with myself, you know, I, when I get mad about something, it's like, why am I getting so mad? But I'm very attached to that as well. And I really see the perversion of men's groups happening as well in the sense that for me, the big thing is, is when guys can get together and be honest, like be honest. It's like, Hey, hey I failed. I fucked up. Hey, uh, you know, STDs, stuff like that, you know, Hey, uh, bad relationships, you know, I, I it, whatever, if we can be honest about that, and learn to deal with it, man, some amazing, beautiful stuff can happen. But I just see people, I see boys being men, and I hate to make it about man and boy, but, but the mean, thing is, is a, when I'm a, when I, I do things like a boy all the time, yeah, you know, I'm childish and child reactive, yeah, going for the next brightest thing, uh, braggadocious, whatever, uh, you know, just not owning myself because I don't know how to do something. And so I see all these like self-help men's gurus, the alpha fucking pussy ass, whatever shit like it's big and chewy. Oh man. And, and these, these Wait, dudes yeah. who it's like, uh, where, where is your integrity? Where is the you? Where's your word? Where's your honor? Where's your integrity? Yeah. Are you your word? Are you on time? Do you fucking keep your commitments? You know, um, do you hold others to a higher standard? Do you have standards? Do you even know what your fucking standards are? And when someone breaks a standard of yours, how do you engage them? You know, how do you engage them and hold them to the standard right, that you right. hold over them? And recognize that you're holding this thing over them. It should be consensual. It's not because I'm just throwing my fucking weight around. It's like, hey, I play this game. You play this game? Great, cool. Here's the standard. Here's the fucking rules. You know? And hmm. I, you will treat me like this, and I will treat you like that. If you don't treat me like this, here's the consequences. It's just clear, honest communication. It's not ego. It's not make you wrong. It's like, dude, I get where you're at. You're in a different place than I am. And, you know, your word isn't that important to you. Or you have no problem with bullshitting. You have no problem with lying. Dude, I'm a bullshitter, but I don't I don't lie in my bullshitting. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not out of integrity with myself or those around me. You know, I create a culture of yeah. integrity, honor, be a word, be a man, step up, and right. then you're... Yeah. Expression is such a personal thing that, yeah. God, man, everybody's got to find their own way. But it's interesting because you're talking about this stuff, and there's this guy who teaches these phenomenal parenting classes in Austin. They're free. He's a social worker, true badass of life, man, much like yourself. But he's like, with your kids, you want to be a fan. You want to be a fan for them. And he goes on to the stuff, and then he's like, but then you want to be a coach, you know? And then if you haven't explained the rules before the game, like a good coach, they're going to go all over the place. But if you you can explain the rules, you can be a better fan. And then he goes on into the, all these analogies. And he's like, eventually you become a referee of everything. But it's not about power. It's not about, uh, God, all these different identities. You can't just put on a striped shirt and then have all of what it is to be a referee. You have to live an experience and you have to learn to make those decisions in the right times. The other day, actually last night I was on a call with my guys and we have these awesome international men's groups. Really cool. We get really like honest and deep with each other, but God, we were talking about some fucking intense shit last night, man. Like, you know, how some of us have, have gone to jail, you know, drug problems, like, and this is all, you know, this is, this is our course about sex, you know, and we're talking about this. Yeah. And I took an hour break. There was actually five hours, man. That's how much oh, we wow. rotated through some shit. It was pretty cool. But, um, I took an hour break and, uh, you know, the, it was like my, uh, Maria was mad that I was on these calls and it was like, I was just thinking to myself then I was like, man, these are the moments that I have to pay attention to. You know, these are the, like the image, the, the shit that I put out there or whatever, man, fuck all that. If I cannot learn to be myself and communicate with somebody in a relationship that I share my life with, that we've created life together with, then what do I have? And, and we don't have a rule book on that. We don't have anywhere to go. And sadly, we have a lot of people making rules who don't have experience or are really coming from something that sounds good. 
You know, yeah. it fucking sounds good. To they're coming experience that they're coming from a place of they already have a value system that that they they bend themselves to. So they think, well, it works for me. It should work for everybody else. Not taking into consideration that everyone else has different experiences, different um, values, different wants and desires. It's it's like you're trying to stuff squares and in the circles, you know, and you're trying to shove things down people's throats. It's like having the ability to to communicate in a relationship. This is actually something the wife wants to do. Um, we were just just discussing this um, two months ago. Um, so on the eighth is my ten year wedding anniversary from October. Hey. And fifteenth of November is my seventeen years together anniversary. Wow. <laughs> Right, and so it's like you know we were looking at that. Like, wow, we've been married for ten years. We've been together for seventeen. Shit, we should do something. I guess. <laughs> right? Do you want to do something for an anniversary? I don't know. Yeah, we, we don't we don't put a lot of emphasis on dates, you know. Um, but uh, we were like, we've got a good track record. We've outdone most of the relationships we know, except for one other. And it's like so we compared notes with that other, one other, and it's like well. What if we did a workshop on relationships, and then our friends getting married on, on Saturday? It was, it was like, well, what if we got together with them and talked to them about marriage and what that can mean or not mean, and help them get through the bumps in the road that most people go through because they're getting married, and yeah. there's a lot of communication breakdown that happens, or a lot of ideas that don't get conveyed, and there's a lot of traps that could happen. They could, you know, derail a marriage. And these are some great communicators, awesome human beings, astounding players, quality players in my life. And it's like, can we help them? And would they want that? And they were like, oh, God, please, yes, yes. And so we're, we, we, we sat down with them last I sat down with him last night and a bunch of guys, and we circled him, uh, mm. about getting him grounded and ready for his marriage. And when I'm done with this, I'm going to go over to her house tonight and talk to her about getting married on Saturday and yeah. we're going to talk about relationship stuff and you know the whole idea is to help them have better communication skills and help them have better ways because we don't get this shit yeah. no one gives us this stuff we had to learn it we learned it all you know I learned it over the years of all the dating I've done because I've been in all open relationships and not, you can't do this without having communication and there are things that work and things that don't work and gods I wish there was a fucking proper roadmap and we were like well what if we made the roadmap you know, we're not experts, but we got right. success. So what if we did something, and how would we give that out there? So that's in the works. <laughs> Man, uh, you know, we've been going for a long time, and it's at that, like, podcast, like, zenith point of where, <laughs> actually, maybe not even at the zenith point anymore, where it's just like, man, this is, like, too hard to listen to. But you bring up something about... You know, marriage and relationships, dude, this is a fucking I know everybody in the seduction scene or the PUA scene. We'll say that Um, because you could say you're in the seduction scene, but I wouldn't see you as in the PUA scene. I I interview these guys for the 21 Convention podcast and I talk to everybody. So I'm talking to like all sorts of dudes. Okay, of all the guys I know in the seduction scene, who do I know who's in a good relationship? Everybody in and because I know them, I know how full of shit they are. That right. if they are in a relationship now, Eric, you know, stand up guy, you know, they, but he, he's really the only dude that I could talk to, uh, you know, hypnotic of on CDA, just for the guys out there. But, um, you know, about that stuff and who would even be real with me. But these other dudes, it's like they might even be married and their fucking marriage is so fucked up and screwed up. And I'm just like, what? Who are you? But then when I interview a fitness guy, it's like they get it. All these things that you want to be alpha. These motherfuckers in the pickup scene that are like, oh, I'm going to do this and be dominant. You don't fucking have it. You know, it, most of the other people out there have it. Now, I get it, man. Sex is good. Any man that is, you know, looking at improving himself, you know, into any sort of empowerment of self needs to look at getting better with women, getting better with sex, communicating and talking to people. But if you think it is like from some of these motherfuckers out there, it's just you know, I really don't know any. You've been married yeah. 10 years. I yeah. mean. I I like I know guys that have had girlfriends and but they it's just it's kind of sad and it's a disappointing thing and I, I think that um you know talking to people about marriage and relationships like we could probably go on another two hours about that but really quickly you know what does marriage mean to you because you you practice polyamory 
Um, you have an adventurous sex life, but what is the difference in the commitment of marriage? What are some of these things that you're going to talk to this, uh, you know, this bride to be about in 15, oh, 20 minutes? Uh, so you're going to talk to her about, um, so we as kids get brought up with, you know, the story of what marriage is, right? The story is this you need to be the bullshit or whatever, you know, TV version of marriage. And girls get fed a really strong message about what marriage means, right? And uh, so there's a disconnect between the idea of getting married, um, what's, what getting married does for you, what, you know, when I'm married, this means X, and you're already in the relationship. You guys are already in it to win it. What's the big distinction? What's, what's going to happen that's going to be different after you get married? Is there anything that's going to get different? Because for us, marriage was really about um, a declaration of our community. That was it. It wasn't because, you know, we hadn't already been together for fucking seven years. Because we had. You know, we've, I mean, I've got 17 years with this woman. And it's like, at the time we chose to get married, it was... I knew I wanted to spend my life with her forever. And I knew I was going to. And I knew socially, from our tribe's point of view, marriage was a solidifying thing for them. Not for us. For them. It wasn't that I'm claiming her. It wasn't that, oh, this is my girl. You know, it was none of that. It was, we are doing something to give back to our community of friends and declaring, look at what we are generating. Hold us. And this is, a, and this is, and literally we declared, this is what we are, this is what we're going to be. I mean, the vows are up here on the wall. Um, literally, I, we wrote our wow, vows. Still on 10 scrolls. years later. Yeah, we, we wrote them on scrolls and we read them and we exchanged vows. Like, I gave her my scroll and she gave me her scroll. And when we did it, it was a thing to the community that, our, that was our friends and our family. Like, I got all of my communities in one space for the first time. Okay? So, my, my blood family my chosen family and her family and you know they all got to melt together and then we held we had them get but the reason we're doing this is we want them to see what we are creating all of them and have all of them hold us to this new thing we wanted them to be a support to us we wanted them to hold our what we felt beautiful as precious, we wanted them to see how precious it was to us. We wanted them to hold that. We wanted to give them that gift. And so for me, marriage was a declaration to my community. It wasn't that it changed who we were, because nothing changed. Actually, the thing that changed for us and made our relationship more solid was not the wedding at all, but it was years before when uh, she was up in Alaska and it, I'm coaching this guy about uh, open relationships and you know he's telling me he wants a relationship like ours and he, he wants to meet the guy and he wants this he wants all these rules and they're like you don't trust her you don't trust her you don't trust her you don't trust her you know every fucking thing you know about well you just don't trust her and he's like no that's not true and then and I get off the phone with him and all the rules that he wanted we've had in place but we weren't using them for years and so I call my best friend to out myself and then He's like, so what are you going to do? I'm going to get a fucking phone with you, dude, and I'm going to call her right now, and I'm going to tell her, you know, we don't need these fucking rules. They're out the window. And, you know, she can go date, and she can fuck what she wants up there, because I know she's lonely, and she's turned on, and she wants that person, that cuddling and all that, and I completely fucking trust her. So when I called her up, I'm like, hey, dude, I love you. I just want you to know this happened, and you know, I completely fucking trust you. And I know that your turn on is coming back to our bed. I know that you are coming back yeah, to him. Yeah. And I know that you being excited up there and, and, and making money and dancing for all these hot little military boys with six packs and they make you happy. Uh, I know that turn on is going to be on the phone with me at night while we're having phone sex. And I know that, you know, that turn on is coming back to my bedroom in two weeks when we get back. And I love and trust you. And you know what? Go fuck who you want. Go get a boyfriend. Do what you want to do. Love you. So it, was, it was like you could have heard a bell rung. Bang! Like this shift yeah. happened in our space. And that, that true freedom and true power and true giving of choice for yeah. both of us was more powerful than our vows. More powerful than our vows. 
You know, it's interesting because uh, in those situations, it's tough to manage. That freedom has to be worked at, at least from my experience. And yeah. I'm just being honest here. Oh, I had yeah, a totally. podcast with a guy who has just experimented with this. And it was really cool having this discussion. He's come, coming from the pickup industry. But it's at the new phase, right? In the new phase. And, not, and it's awesome because I can't have this discussion with anybody in the pickup industry. But I could with him. But he's at the new phase with it. And he's like, oh, well, you know, I just set this frame for my girl. And she does this. And then she doesn't do anything. And it's like, ah. You, you know, the thing is, is... The reason, though. There's a reason. And this is the thing that gets, gets kind of funky when people start doing this. When you suddenly take the horse out to the pasture instead of being saying, saying okay, you can have the entire pasture... The horse yep. stays next to the fence yep. because yep. why? It's like, well, I, I, I kind of like this. Yep. It's like, yep. great, I'll feed you. And you have the whole pasture. And it's yeah. like, well, but I like you. But you know, I like you too. Go play. <laughs> if you give people choice, it's crazy. Actually, a guy, um, man, well, I mean, this is anonymous and this is actually something I think people should hear, but he's in my group and he's going through a divorce. And he just, he got to the point where he's fucked. And I've been there, man. Oh, shit. Sorry. I've been there. I've been fucked. And, like, you can't win. The court system's not fair. The court systems are not justice, man. They are not. not. <laughs> and not. Anyway, <laughs> civil and criminal. It is, it is, it is, a, uh, it is something else, right? And, um, you know, I think our court systems are better than, you know, a lot of other countries. But, uh, but you know, there's a lot of unfairness that takes place. And, if, and, and he, he screwed. He ran out of money. Um, he had an awesome lawyer and, you know, he, he can't afford his lawyer anymore. And I was like, you know what, you know, don't take my advice because I haven't always won in these situations. But what I know is when people are allowed to be their demon selves, they'll, they'll, they'll stop. There, there'll be nothing there. You know, it's the reaction that is feeding the demon. And, um, you know, and that's in that opposite angle and he doesn't really have any other choice, but it's like, Hey, you know, look, ex-wife, do what you got to do. You know, do do it. Um, I I can't. So I'm defenseless. Do what's going to make you happy, and um uh, and whatever. I'm gonna live life. But if you do that in a sexual relationship, this is where I know it works. And you say like, hey, you know, you know, fuck these other people. Go do it. They'll do it. Try it, and that will come back. And that loyalty is there. But what a guy needs to realize. You know, and this is the part where it's like real for me, is that because I've had many relationships like that. No matter how much skill, experience, this is the myth that all these motherfuckers like promote and buy into, but it is not true. This does not happen. And any guy I know that his experience just doesn't have or, or it's similar. But you, it does fuck with you. You know, when your wife or girlfriend is fucking somebody else, it's like, oh, shit, because you're not there fucking. If you were in the same room and you were fucking somebody else or you were, you know, tag team or whatever it was like, you wouldn't have the same feelings. But it, it fucks with you. And so as a man, you have to learn to go like, all right, how can I relax? How can I be a part of my word? How can I find love in this? How can I, uh, and it's tough. And if men could be honest about shit like that, we could come to a solution that is like really awesome because so, it's, it's jealousy, temporary, that feeling. It's the jealousy thing. The jealousy isn't about what she's doing. It's about you. It's about your personal insecurities. You're not feeling worthy or you're not feeling safe or you're not feeling heard are you feeling less than love or less than something when you have that lack going on in yourself it's just ugly it's nasty and you know your worthiness your personal worthiness is going to make all of that go away your personal value and your and you yeah, feeling yeah. appreciated you feeling loved you feeling from her appreciated and loved. Yeah, yeah. And just communicate that. Like, hey, the jealousy bug came up. I know it's not you. I just need to be loved over here. Can you love me up? Can you appreciate me? Can you yep. tell me how good I am? Can you tell me what I'm I don't need to hear that I'm the best fucking lover because I know that I am a great lover. But right. there are other guys out there that do shit that I don't do. And there are guys out there with smaller dicks than mine and don't strain her. You know? <laughs> you know, there's... There are things that she can do with other guys she can't do with me, and I'm fucking happy for her to have that experience because I'm gonna be able to do things with other girls that she just does not want to fucking right. do, you know. And yeah. it's like I don't need her to get a boob job because I got, you know, all these girls with big boobs I can play with. Yeah, you know, I don't need her to her to dye her hair red because I know plenty of redheads like fuck. Yeah, you know, it's it's not 
Yeah, there's no lack. There's abundance. When you come from a place of abundance, the whole jealousy thing starts to just dissipate and not be around. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's getting to the abundance, getting to that, that um, wholeness, getting to that feeling empowered and um, feeling appreciated and loved that makes all of this possible. And so I put out as much of it as I can because I don't want her to experience that. Yeah, I think that the, those like social emotions like jealousy, guilt, and shame, I mean, they're dependent upon someone else. They're very <laughs> real, but they're so dependent upon somebody else that's a window within us. You know, if we can explore what we feel when we're rejected, when we're interacting with things that we don't like, or when we fail, we can really come to some deep answers within ourselves. Man, uh, that was actually cool. I loved hearing that. You know, just even saying the jealousy thing came up, you know. Where do guys learn how to say that? I wish I heard that, you know, five, six years ago when I was experimenting in these uh, relationships and just not knowing. I wish I heard it 15 years ago when, you know, that that shit happened. But, um, man, I think we got to wrap it up. How do guys find you? Um, uh, So uh, dominance101.com. Go there. There's uh, three hours of video uh, broken up into chunks. It's actually a whole course that Mm -hmm. is on dominance, three pillars of dominance. And uh, there's also a fourth video, which is there, gives uh, you know, my story and uh, describes the workshop in detail. And if you want to take the workshop, go for it, because that's what you got to do is click the button and buy. And yeah. that's what you do. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and uh, the next workshop is October 24th, 25th, and 26th. And then the following one is in November on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. What cities? All in Las Vegas. Awesome. Yeah, then in December, I'm going down to Australia, teaching in Australia. What city? Sydney and Melbourne. Hey, so. Melbourne, we got a lot of we got a lot of people who, who listen to Melbourne. So. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and in Sydney, too. So actually <laughs> both. But and I, and let me just say this. Uh, you know, and also a lot of those guys came through Eric, so they know uh, Hypnotica. Um, so, the, you know, John is somebody who I met through Eric. You know, I met you at Johnny Soporno's thing in Vegas where Eric invited me, you know, so he, he, uh, you know, a lot of these dudes are like, Hey man, you know, there's so much bullshit out there. Look, you know, if you don't trust John through me, know that, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's done stuff with Von Cedow and, and really close with them and all that sort of stuff. Um, what I would also say is that, uh, you know, in, in Australia, there's just some cool stuff going on that, that the, the vibe I get. And when I was in Melbourne, I've never been to Sydney, but the vibe about sex and openness and a, lo- a lot of what the guys are doing there, it's, it's really cool. So I think you're going to have like a badass time. Oh, it'll be, you. it'll be winter there, but yeah, or it'll uh, be summer. Uh, I'm sorry, but this is down there and she's going to be promoting the workshop and hopefully we're going to be teaching together. So I'm very excited about that. So and that awesome. is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool, man. Hey, yeah. I think we got to kill it. We're, we're oh. past two hours. Oh, we are, we? <laughs> yeah, you got to do your thing and you got a long weekend ahead of you. But man, this yeah. is this is a epic, badass motherfucking podcast. I dug it. Um, I, I love talking to you. We got to build that panel and, and, uh, yeah. and, and broadcast that message more because more people need to know about you, man. Hell yeah. yeah do. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh man, badass. Cool. Well, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. John Lichtenberg for you there. Of course, we have that previous podcast that we did with him, uh, man, like six months ago or something like that, maybe even longer, but equally as awesome. Uh, what a great guy. Check him out at Dominance 101. Tell him I sent you. You know, that helps us out. That helps us out with all this affiliate stuff and just build this awesome community where we can interact and have a dialogue and have episodes like this on Bang Radio where, man, we really, really share this message of. God, how awesome it can be to be a man. How awesome it can be to be a woman and share that sexual experience. That's what it's all about, guys. Anyway, hit me up, social media, at Steve Maeda, Steve at The Sexual Life, any of these things. And of course, support us at VenusianArts.com slash Evolve. That's my program where you can find out about a whole bunch of cool stuff and uh, better your life because that's what we're all about. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you guys soon.